Hello, this is Max on the Moon Lambeau channel, and it is 100% without question a verifiably true fact that XRP will not benefit from this. What is this? Well, there's some legislation that's been proposed that, if passed, would go a long way in providing sufficient regulatory clarity for the cryptocurrency asset class, including specifically, and this is why it really matters, who's in charge of what? There are so many different parts of the United States federal government that all want to take claim over the crypto asset class, but it's Congress that has the legal ability to decide who gets to do what with what and how. And there's not sufficient guidance even on that level. And so you think, okay, so we don't even have on, we don't even know who should be in charge of what. And then you have individual d the branches, if you want to call it that, of the, the United States federal government that are all saying, okay, even though they know that they aren't technically in charge because it's not clear who the hell's in charge, but then they start making up a bunch of rules by enforcement effectively, like the SEC just charging people for allegedly alleged misconduct. Uh, despite the fact that no rules were, were set forth, it's just it's a messy whirlwind of crap. And as far as you know, as far as what's been brought by the SEC, it's like just imagine if you could like visually in your mind an entire army of asshats that don't care about what is ethically right or logically correct, but they care about a power grab and making sure that they're in charge of the crypto asset class. Just imagine an entire army of these little asshat things are just like marching forward. And they sound like, wah, 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 wah. that's the sound they make when they're marching forward. Wah, 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 wah. That's it. Just all asshats. But uh, here we have some, in theory, if it passes, and if it's good, <laughs> so there's a lot of question marks still fine, but potentially reasonable steps forward here. Unfortunately, it is too late for XRP. XRP being sued by the SEC prior to any sort of clarity uh, not just from the SEC, but from Congress in terms of who should even freaking be in charge of this. Now, to be clear, I don't have a financial background of any kind. I am not offering financial advice, and you should not buy or sell anything because of anything that I say all right. I'm just an enthusiast who likes following crypto-related stories, mostly surrounding Ripple and XRP, and I make YouTube videos and such purely as a hobby that is all that it is. So there's this piece from the Daily Huddle titled, Lawmakers Introduce Bill to Bring Long-Awaited Crypto Clarity in the United States. Lawmakers have proposed new legislation to clarify crypto regulations in the U.S. and shed light on which qualities determine whether or not a digital asset is a security. <sighs> you know, can I just pause and say, like, part of the way that I'm looking at this at this point, now that I have a better understanding of the, uh, the approach the SEC has been taking, they are, and I understand why, they're, they're differentiating between something that's sold as an investment contract versus the, the idea of the underlying asset itself being uh, an actual security. And so you can think about the Howey test, which was about orange groves. And so, uh, you know, right there, like the Howey test was passed there, meaning that uh, the transactions in the Howey case back from the 40s, and I don't want to go too far off the rails here, but I'm assuming most of you at this point know what that is because it's just talked about so much. I've covered it so much on this channel. Like that, that represented... Uh, a securities offering. It did, right? Legally, as far as the United States government is concerned, it absolutely did. It didn't mean that the that the orange groves them like the oranges, the underlying oranges. It doesn't mean that the orange is now a a, a security in and of itself. It said that the way in which the transactions occurred represented an investment contract. That's what the legal statement was, and and so that's unique actually to the United States. I'm not aware of another com uh, a country in the world differentiating. Uh, in, in such a way. And so the legal parameters, it's 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 really hard to compare. So like when we say that there are other countries around the world that haven't found XR, uh, XRP to be a security, that's true. But it's, it's also a completely different legal framework, which would have made it less likely that something this messy would have happened, frankly. And so now that we are in this train wreck of a mess, we have to deal with it fine, begrudgingly fine. But if this is the way that we have to proceed forward here, it doesn't make sense to say that XRP in and of its, just by the nature of it existing, is a security. And that is effectively one of the claims the SEC is making. That does not make sense. It does not make sense. Like, are you aware of the Chewbacca defense? If you don't know, just look up Google Chewbacca defense. That's what the SEC is doing. They're doing the Chewbacca defense. It does not make sense. So... 
if we could just knock that crap off, that would go a long way. And so at least Congress is coming in. And, and yeah, look, they could gum it up even worse. Like, I, I just, I, I don't have extremely high confidence for management of the federal government. And for those of you in the United States, if you question that, have you been to the DMV? Did you have a good time there? Did you? Did you? Was it a speedy experience? Did you have friendly customer service? Did you? Did you have good interactions with the employees there? You let me know in the comments section below. I, I, I think I know the answers there, though. And so, you know, like, cautiously optimistic to see, like, this stuff has to be worked out regardless, for sure. You just don't know what it's necessarily going to look like, right? And so representatives Patrick Henry, uh, Republican North Carolina, Stephen Lynch, Democrat Massachusetts, Glenn Thompson, Republican Pennsylvania, and Ted Budd, Republican North Carolina, and Warren Davidson, Republican Ohio, introduced the legislation called the, I like this, the quote, Eliminate Barriers to Innovation Act of 2021 on Tuesday. I like that. What a, what a, what a great name. That sounds like the name of some sort of legislation, doesn't it? It, it, it certainly is. There we go. And look at, look at the bipartisan effort that we can feel so good about that. Oh my gosh, they're crossing the aisle to help the crypto sphere. The law's objective is to establish the jurisdiction of the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission and the Commodity Futures Trading Commission over cryptocurrencies. The SEC oversees assets classified as a security while the CFTC is in charge of commodities. So right there, you can see why it's a mess. This part is true. The last sentence, SEC oversees assets classified as a security. Fact. CFTC is in charge of commodities. Fact. So what the hell's crypto? <laughs> Therein lies the problem. Therein lies the problem. Because they both in different situations are like, it, it fits, it fits, huh? we're in charge now. Uh, I'm sorry, sir. It, it, we're the ones in charge. Now you can have instances, thanks to the way the United States government is set up in which uh, um, and it can make sense, I suppose, that uh, more than one branch, if you will, of the United States federal government is in charge of overseeing a particular something or other. Like there are situations where that can make sense. But when you have every single, not literally, but just about like every single, it seems that way, right? uh, part of the federal government, all the different divisions, branches, so on and so forth, claiming that they're the ones that are to oversee it, it gets a bit messy, does it not? Well, certainly it does. But anyway, the bill will create a working group. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Um, oh, actually, I'm sorry. I skipped a sentence. This is... Uh, oh, no, I didn't. I apologize. No, I was right the first time. I retract my retraction. The bill will create a working group to evaluate the legal and regulatory frameworks governing digital assets in the United States. The group will form within 90 days after the approval of the bill. It will be composed of industry experts from the SEC and CFTC and non-governmental representatives from organizations and companies related to financial services and financial technology. Well, at least they're getting some third parties in there, right? Uh, the group will analyze current crypto regulations and submit a report within a year on how current legal measures affect markets and the nation's competitive position. It will also provide recommendations to improve the integrity and efficacy of primary and secondary digital asset markets. And so the cynic of me wants to be like, oh, this is great. I can't wait to see how much you screw it up 12 months from now. That'll be great to check back in and make another Moon Lambo hot jam just to cover that. But uh, I'm actually more of an optimist. I'm, I'm a realist, but an optimist by nature. So I'm hoping, <laughs> cautiously optimistic, that this will turn out A-OK. -okay. In the end, this ultimately is going to figure it out. It's just it's more so a question of, like, to, to, to what degree is it going to be messy? How long is it going to take? And what does that mean for XRP? Uh, unfortunately, even if this is something that would have in the future had it existed now, like or previously, it saved XRP uh, from, you know, uh, being in this position and ripple from going through these legal hurdles... Like it's it's just too late. So, and then they wrap it by stating the move comes amid calls for clearer crypto regulations, with SEC Commissioner Hester Pierce in the forefront of pushing for regulatory clarity as institutional interest in Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies continues to grow. And uh, I've been I've been watching a lot from her lately. I've seen her in interviews, and she's been uh, interview. Well, so I've seen video interviews on YouTube. I've also seen, uh, read interviews just in various publications, very recent ones. And she's made her position pretty damn clear. She's she's pro crypto, but uh, it's 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 the messiness of this all. It's it's actually no. It's some of what I was even citing just several minutes ago in this video. This i this idea of of just by nature, you know, well, nature may not be the the best word to use, I suppose, because cryptos don't occur in nature. But just like by nature, in and of what it is, and whatever it innately it is. 
it, it's just somehow magically a security just but purely by by existence and uh, hester purse she actually uh, she she can she came around i watched her in a, a video um from tony's thinking crypto channel is a, a very recent one and she cited just that she, like, she used to think kind of differently but it's, it's just this idea that you know you can have an asset that can go from centralized to decentralized and vice versa and and as a result of that being the case you know it can go from being a security to not a security you know the, the way in which it's sold certainly that's certainly the case and, uh, you know, that recognition, like, I realized that years ago, even having no sort of legal background on this or that, and I've been literally saying that for those of you that have been around for the, you know, the two plus years I've been running this channel, you've probably heard me say this a number of times before the SEC went after Ripple. And that's effectively, it is what Hester Peirce said. She's an SEC commissioner again. So it, it, to me, that is something that makes just an abundance of sense. And uh, as far as what the SEC is doing, um, if I could just wrap up the video with this. Um, I'm, I'm not going to go through this article because I made a whole video where I broke this down and just shared every every ounce of thinking I had on it, frankly. So I'm not going to read even a sentence from it. But I covered this Forbes article. It was uh, written by Rosalind Layton, PhD, titled SEC Stumbles in Ripple Case Lost in a Maze of Its Own Making. Fantastic article, by the way. She's put out three articles since the SEC has gone after Ripple, all of them absolutely fantastic. I've covered all three of them, and I will, I'll continue to cover whatever she puts out. It's absolutely fantastic. She's coming at it from a truly logical, just incredibly analytical position, and I respect and appreciate what she's put out there. Happy to amplify her voice further on my little Silly Moon Lambo channel here. But Greg Kidd retweeted um, that uh, the tweet she put out about her own article. Now, Greg Kidd... Uh, he is a former Ripple employee. He was a the chief rip, uh, chief risk officer from 2013 to 2015. And he didn't need a job, mind you. He begged for a job. That's his own words, by, mind you, <laughs> because he was so excited about what Ripple was doing. And he had already made his fortunes, right? And so he's a massive holder of XRP. He also owns a company that, uh, well, has a bunch of holdings, including Ripple the company, as well as uphold the United States, uh, well, actually, it's not United States. Maybe it was, a, I can't remember where it was founded. They got locations all over the world, including a couple in the United States, but uh, they own uh, uh, also a portion of Uphold they've invested in anyway. So they've invested in Ripple, they've invested in Uphold. Uh, and a ton of other companies, mind you. I'll just give you like a b brief background so that you can get a feel for like the degree to which uh, Greg Kidd is kind of in the know. And in his, in his own words, he said, like, a lot of what he's done in his life, it's swing for the fences type stuff. Those are his own words right there. Swing for the fences. I like that. Swing for the fences. And so uh, what Ripple's doing and, and XRP adoption also, that's a swing for the fences type moment unquestionably. And so after Greg Kidd read that article from Rosalind Layton, he retweeted it and wrote the following. And tagged Forbes first and wrote, Maximum hypocrisy. SEC suing to dismiss case from investors by claiming that it's not clear that XRP is a security while suing Ripple for saying that they should have known seven years ago that XRP is a security. Shameless, absolutely nailing, you know, just bashing that nail right on the head. And so what he's talking about here is there is a case from uh, our, um, well, John Deaton, attorney John Deaton, he's filing effectively class act. It is a class action against the SEC. Um, but as far as them denying his initial, uh, I guess it was the writ of mandamus, uh, they cited that, uh, well, look, your, your claims don't stand. XRP hasn't even been declared a security, it's, and, and that's true. Um, you, you know, <laughs> the SEC is arguing that XRP is a security, but it has to be adjudicated in court. So technically, at this point, of course, it certainly is not. But then it's just it's just the hypocrisy of this all to see that that's their stance to try and throw out John Deaton's claims all while moving forward against Ripple, saying that they should have known. So the SEC, they're, they're arguing that XRP today is not proven to be a security, yet Brad Garlinghouse and Ripple and, and uh, <clears throat> Chris Larson, they all should have known. They all should have known seven years ago. It's completely hypocritical. So I thought that would be a fun way to wrap up the video, just to, to highlight what the asshat team is doing. That's exactly it's so nonsensical. I'm not a financial advisor. Do not buy or sell anything because of anything that I say or write. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the moon, Lambo.